Hello, shalom, hola. And welcome to The Spiritual Life with Mystic Reverend Travis Tidwell. This podcast is always sponsored by the Lord God Yahweh, Sacred Dragon, Hermes Mercurius. I'm here with my executive producer, who's also my daughter and high priestess and Sacred Dragon, Athena. I'm here with my special guest, the lovely Ashley. Hi, everybody. And this is the third time we've sat down at this table now together. Yes, it's been exciting. <laughs> yes, it has been. And you know, you know, I really never sh- shared the table or mic with anybody before, so it's it's been very nice to have you here. Thank you so much. And, I really and, and appreciate it. Yeah. And you know, and while you have, I have you here because we really didn't get a chance to really talk about you that much. I want to ask you some questions about you right now. Okay, yeah, let's do it. You know, I one of the things I saw. I mean, because here's the thing about Ashley. She studied with me a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. And I guess you've been around the gamut. You've, you've, you've been getting readings from people. You've, you've had different classes and stuff. So many. Is that, is that right? I mean, elaborate. I mean. Yeah, no, definitely. I've always been into spirit. Um, I've gotten readings from, I would say, the Trinity Oracles. They're actually down in San Diego. Um, I've met with the astrologer, Dr. Turi. So if you guys um, have seen on Amazon Prime, he's kind of like a world leader astrologer and UFO abductee. And then, um, you know, partnering with you, which was, it was funny because spirit led me back to you for, I had to like complete my cycle for my regular life. And then I just, you know, it was guiding me back. And this is where the rest of my life is going to stay, be married to spirit. It's exciting. Right, Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And I noticed that um, because you're also, I mean, you're taking classes, you're, you're preparing to be a teacher, you know, uh, yourself, you know, and, uh, and also a, a great psychic. You know, is what yeah. you're you're preparing to be, and so I know that you just did a woman's class or a woman's group. That's coming actually in. coming up on the 28th. Okay. Yeah, so I'm doing like a sacred woman's group, and, okay. and basically I want um, women to regain their femininity and, and and reclaim their goddess inside of them. I you feel. Bet. <laughs> I don't think there's enough women that are sitting there um, really like hyping themselves up. I'm like, no, now's the time to take the self care and reclaim your your drive like we are women of power right Mm -hmm. right that's great that's fantastic definitely the the world and the planet needs more of that for women you know (laughs) i've been a firm believer in my philosophy that uh, all women are goddesses they are and you know the bad thing about women today Mm -hmm. is that uh, there's no glory in being a mother okay number one and and if 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 the government would give the women a nice salary every month to stay home and be a good mother and have what she wanted and bling bling whatever we'd have a happier country that and mothers awesome. need to be taken care of no no I, and, and to piggyback off of what you said i just think like now there's this unrealistic standard that after you have a baby or something you're not supposed to have stretch marks you're already supposed to be you know looking like marilyn monroe basically and i right. feel like there's so much pressure it's unfair. oh yeah well it's, it's, it's a very visual word for, first of all you know I'm one of my later podcasts. Uh, I love Marilyn, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so, so do I. In fact, I did an RIP on her today, actually. Oh, that's Marilyn Monroe, yeah. Spontaneous channeling. Yeah, yeah there, there you go. No, but um, at, at some point, it's... Uh, what, what, what did you just say? I'm sorry, I lost it for a second. Oh, um, Marilyn Monroe, um, how women need to reclaim their femininity. Yeah, so, so basically what happens is that men disrespect women, mm-hmm. and women accept it. Mm-hmm. And women get into these um, mental place where they feel they don't have control or power. Oh, it's so true. And, you know, as soon as they claim themselves to be a goddess, a daughter of Yahweh, mm-hmm. and simply know that you've been created by a divine source, not just through your mother's womb, mm-hmm. but this whole thing has been created by this divine source that's so powerful that you are also an extension of that power. Yes, I want you know? people to understand that. And that's also yeah. what the Sacred Women Group is about, because I don't think women really, I don't think people in general see themselves as an extension of God. And women right. need, people in general need to know that they are right. directly with yeah. source. Yeah, no, women are goddesses. We, you create life. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't be here without a womb, mm-hmm. okay? And I, I also feel, too, to some degree that, you know, the, the patriarch here on, on this planet uh, is changing. And as we get into the Aquarian age, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we'll see more f- female leaders as we do now. I mean, for sure, Kamala Harris will be the Kamala first. Harris, she will girl, be the first yes. female president, guaranteed. There's just no way out of that psychically. Um, I just can't see anything else. And I just have to add you know? in the black girl magic. You don't, people don't understand, like, how how hard we've been fighting for this. Like, right. to see that in her speech was just so it's beautiful. empowering. Yeah. And I just want to let all the girls know or everyone that they have I, that possibility. I, I drew a tear, man. I tell Me you what, too. you know. It was, it was oh very God. touching. I'm sleeping better, so 
I'm hoping we're right there on the. No, he <laughs> if really I've insulted wasn't. any Republican, sorry, no. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, what's my executive producer doing over there? Are you on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. So anyway, so yeah, so that's great. So if anybody has anything they'd like to ask Ashley about the Sacred Women's Group, uh, you can contact her on what. The Pisces Life Coach, you can DM me on Instagram, yeah, or just follow me too, because I like to post some inspirational stuff on occasion. <laughs> yeah, and, um, you know, if, uh, obviously, if you have any questions here for me at The Spiritual Life, you can hit me up at, what is it, executive producer? Travis Tibble Podcast. Travis Podcast. Gmail. And uh, that's how you can find me. You can also go to my website, Travis Tibble.us. Uh, you can go to my Spotify account and get uh, The Spiritual Life, which you're probably listening to now on podcast. Mm -hmm. But you can also listen to my album, Time Has Come, uh, which has been played all over the world. And I just thank the Lord God Yahweh and everything I have for just getting that out there. And uh, I'm so happy to have everybody here tonight. So here with Ashley, we've been talking about so much different stuff. Oh, my gosh. We can talk for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years. And uh, so today we're talking about making an altar to communicate with. Um, this has been going on since the beginning of time, an altar, a place to put things so that when you call your angels and spirit guides in the room, they come to the table to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when they see that you have the four elements out there, uh, maybe you've invoked the four angels, depending on how serious your magic is mm -hmm. and how serious and how intricate you want to go with this. Mm -hmm. But just for general, you know, uh, purposes, so to speak. Uh, we always talk about the four elements and on your altar you have to have the four elements which is earth air fire water mm -hmm. and uh, as we're talking here I'm gonna go ahead and light this this is charcoal this is actually three king charcoal which is probably the best band to buy okay where can I get brand this, to by buy the way. Uh, you can get this uh, uh, well you can get this on my website in the future here real soon yeah just we, go there yeah but you just google it you know three kings yeah you can go to my website we'll have stuff up there we're gonna be launching that really in march and honestly i am telling you firsthand his stuff is so legit i only get my stuff first from travis well, before you. i go anywhere else thank you yes well she knows i am og at this for sure you west know? coast magic OG. west i'm always representing that west coast magic i came from the streets and that's just the way that works uh, spirit's not going to come from the White House. Spirit's not going to come from the Pope. Mm -hmm. True spirit. Preach. And I'm not trying to, you know, dishonor the Pope. I, I'm a Roman Catholic by birth. But, you know, hey, it's the truth. It is the truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus was poor, okay? <laughs> you know, he didn't have a car. He didn't go to, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. Most prophets and leaders and spiritual teachers have suffered to do the work, you know. We're very lucky today to live in this age and time where we can you know, elevate ourselves and aspire to higher things without paying mm -hmm. all the dues that we pay. Yes. But, you know, in America, to be self-employed spiritually is a challenge because you got SDG and E, you've got everything down here to pay That's, for bills. Yes, this is exactly what and, I meant where uh, I had to finish my stuff and I came back to you because I had to complete all that stuff for my family. It was just by the grace of spirit that I took this opportunity. It gave me a divine timing to start right. this practice. So and, I love, and I love that about you because I feel like the more people who I meet and who come into my sacred dragon vibration who have experience, then they know what they get here. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes to me for the first time for teachings and learning, mm -hmm. and they haven't been anywhere else, they're not going to stay. Yeah, this is definitely you know? more for the advanced. You know, and, and somebody who really wants to be on the journey, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, so to speak. Uh, so we got some charcoal burning right here. Okay. So we're talking about altars. Let me just make my notes here. Okay, so we got the charcoal going. Yeah. Trying to see this. And today is 121 to 121. 121 to 121. Oh, that's strange, really. Yeah, let me just see what that is. It's a seven day. Today is a seven day. Good victory, success. People who achieve uh, greatness and have the ambition to achieve greatness, that's the number seven. Actually, the seventh Hebrew alphabet letter is the most successful al alphabet letter in the whole Hebrew alphabet, they say. I never knew that. Yeah. So I'm just sharing that with everybody out there. Some, some magical information here. Uh, I'll put this away over here. As you can see, we are in the laboratory. I'm the real new age shaman here. Yeah, that's right. Like you know, yeah, we, we, we've got everything here. More in the garage, you know. So, 
it's it's one thing to talk about it and then it's another thing to live it you know what i'm saying that's that's the whole difference there so you know we're talking about altars now you know i'm og i believe in the uh, i mean i live the old testament moses and me had were roommates i live by the ten commandments i love the old prophets and solomon and all the ancients you know solomon had a temple he had an altar mm -hmm. he had crystals on his altar for sure and you unfortunately on spotify you're not seeing the beautiful crystals we have here on the table but switch over to your youtube channel and yes. <laughs> you can oh my see gosh. um and so they worked their magic in many many different ways now um today we have <clears throat> frankincense on the table i buy that by the pound i didn't even know you could buy it like that by the way yeah 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 you can get this on the internet no problem um i'm not selling bulk i'm not in that kind of business mm -hmm. uh and then i have you know my frankincense in a little frankincense container my little rock it's frankincense rock g okay you want to get some rock i got some rock right here all right so to you. <laughs> yeah and actually you know frankincense is very magical in so many different ways because first of all it's it's the lord god yahweh's favorite smell okay i've heard that before but it's also the god ra's favorite smell in egypt and at high noon in Egypt, they would burn giant incense burners of just frankincense for the god Ra. Who, sometimes and I the god like, Ra is the sun, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no, sometimes yeah. I feel like I was born in the wrong time period because I just, I wish I was there. Yeah. I wish I was there. I no, might have been there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say yes and no. Yes and yeah, no. yeah. I know I definitely have, a, I had definitely have been in Egypt in a past life. And, mm -hmm. you know, definitely you were in Atlantis in a past life. And that's why I give you on that. And you have to remember that the Atlanteans are the remnants and leftovers of the, uh, Egyptians. That's what the Egyptians are. They're the, the remnants and leftovers of the Atlanteans. Oh, of the Atlanteans. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So that's where you got that whole Atlantean Egyptian thing going on. Yeah. Because in my philosophy, mm -hmm. she's a young soul. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I definitely am. Which doesn't mean anything. I'm just impatient. You know, well, <laughs> impatient for sure, but also instant karma, you know. Oh. You know, there's a lot of things that come with that package. But you're a one, I'm a Nate, but we both share the angel Ariel. Mm -hmm. So for those people out there listening to the podcast today or watching us on the YouTube channel, if you don't know who your assigned angel is, email me. Yes, actually, I had to ask him again the other day. Yeah. You're very knowledgeable yeah. in all the You know, angels. you want to know who your assigned angel is, who you can call every day in prayer and say, all my angels can close to me now. Ariel, that includes you. Okay, Ariel, I need my car fixed. Mm -hmm. I need a girlfriend. Uh, I think that's a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> I want to have some fun. No. <laughs> actually, I just need money. <laughs> yeah, that's the only fun I need. That's all we the need money. is money. The money. Uh, <laughs> but the angels work. I mean, if I need a parking space, I'll call my angels before I get there and say, hey, angels, give me oh, a parking same. space. Oh, my yeah. God. No, I swear yeah. on everything. No, so every time I know I'm going to go to the mall or someplace yeah. super crazy, I'm like, angels, give me a parking spot. And you literally bet. 9 out of 10, there will always be a spot right up front. It's like... When you're same connected, same you thing know, here. Yeah, you know. maybe that's an aerial thing. Yeah, that's yes. it's 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 very mm -hmm. badass to be very spiritual. <laughs> yeah. To be spiritual, be badass. Not to be <laughs> spiritual, weak and fragile. Now, please don't touch me. <laughs> please. Oh, you know, I love the Dalai Lama, but I could never live like the Dalai Lama. I mean, you know, once you've tasted life, you know, and you're spiritual, you know, you want to just enjoy life. To be spiritual, you got to be spirited. Yes. You have to be spirited. Yes. You can't just be lying around. They go, oh my God. I was forced to come back to this life. Come on, give me a break. But anyway, <laughs> back to magic here. Now, something most magicians have and witches is a mota. And this is where we grind herbs. Okay. Oh, I still have some herb left in there. Yeah, wow. I was looking in there. What kind of herb is Ooh, that? Ooh, that's money herb. Ooh, speaking of mm -mm -mm. money. Yeah, that's money herb. Yeah, so I do make my own herb blends and stuff here. And so for those of you who want to have an altar and want to participate in some type of ritual for yourself you want to get some herbs uh, and when you want to get different herbs and make your own blend you're going to have one of these now i haven't burned this i didn't even know this was out we'll have to bag this up we'll put just a little bit on there and what is this herb again i'm sorry i didn't, I didn't catch it uh, we put frankincense we just put frankincense rock on here now this is just a blend i don't I'm not even sure what the blend is oh, okay. Um, okay this is one of my private blends that i've made Okay, and I bagged up and had some the, leftovers. I shelf. had some leftovers, yeah. <laughs> top shelf. Yeah, and it's nice that I can do that, that I have all the herbs I need uh, to create things like that for myself. Um, and you'll be able to buy some of my incense and stuff on my website, oh, my that's, personal that's stuff. Gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, and it's been out, and, it, and it's and that's not even fresh anymore. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah, so, and we'll, we'll probably do a podcast in the future where we'll, we'll do some herbs together. But going back to the magic. <laughs> you know, some altars can be very simple. Yes. You know, you could just have a candle lit and just uh, a, a picture of your deity, possibly. Mm 
um, maybe a crystal on the altar, something of that nature, mm-hmm. uh, maybe just a stick of incense, and you're good to go. I mean, it doesn't take rocket science to create an altar for yourself, but it just depends on how serious you are and what you're trying to direct. Now, an altar that I just described is a great altar to meditate on. Mm-hmm. You know, great to be one with spirit and, and have that whole vibration. Of course. You know, and you don't need everything here to pray and to move energy, but this is the best way to move energy. So mm-hmm. when you're working and wanting to create an altar for yourself, you're going to need the four tools. Mm-hmm. And that's earth, air, fire, water. Now, here I have uh, a handmade dagger. I know not too many people have those lying around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, where did we get what? <laughs> and you can see there's a dragon. That's actually... Um, May I please? Yeah, that's that's antler bone. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that was made for me. That's a, a dragon. This could do some damage. Yeah, but that's uh, that's, that's, that's a, a beautiful uh, magical blade that represents the element of air for me mm-hmm. for my my altar. And also too, um, I'm sure for anyone listening or watching, um, these are also the same elements that are on the table in the magician card. That's right, that's right. If you've been studying any type of magic or tarot cards. Um, we're talking about the magician card here tonight because uh, that card is the perfect card to show you what you need on your altar to communicate with. Mm -hmm. And the magician card, male or female, that card does represent manifesting. You know, and Mm -hmm. that's what the magician does. He manifests. Now, for you women out there, it's, it's really more of the high priestess card, but for you to be the high priestess, you have to have those tools too. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. it's something, and that there's that that gets very very involved in conversation, mm-hmm. uh, and then I have here, which I had made f- years ago, which is a wooden pentagram, which represents Earth. You know, so here now I have air, I have Earth. Now you don't have to have. I, have, I mean, I have a beautiful dragon chalice. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I've seen it. I mean, you yeah. you used it in ritual. Before, yeah. Oh yeah. Actually. Oh yeah. And so I didn't I didn't bring it on the table tonight to share with everybody. But my last ritual, I just used this little clay bowl Very to put my water in. That's right. Very it doesn't humble. have to be all fancy. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I love that, you know. So that's my water. So I have earth, air, water. Mm-hmm. Now, here's my fire, which is also a tool that was made for me. <laughs> Your wand. Uh, yeah, this is my wand, one of my wands. And, um, Oh, wow. It's, 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 it's so beautiful because this is instant cedar wood. And uh, at the time, my teacher was trying to teach me how to be the coyote. Mm-hmm. He said I was the wolf and that uh, wolves don't run in packs. Coyotes do. And mm-hmm. that I need to become more social. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so he wrote the word coyote in, in the Viking runic alphabet. At first, I thought it said cotton. I was trying to figure <laughs> that out. That's <laughs> my bad. Yeah, <laughs> no, and then you can see he, he engraved a little coyote right there. You have some of the best like and, items. It's like a museum in yeah. here. And this has a copper tube going down the center. And in the center, it's uh, pink tourmaline was crushed up and put in there, as you can see that pink right there. And then yeah, we have smoky quartz here at the top, which is beautiful. And then he also put a thumb uh, uh, or, or fingertip chakra point for the wand to use in magic. So now go ahead and rub your palms together. See, let's, let's activate our palm chakras. How are we doing on time, executive producer? Okay. Rub and rub and rub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, again, my magical tool, my wand, this represents fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I will do now is uh, you're right-handed. Yes, I am right-handed. Then let me see your left hand because your left hand is the receptive. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to pro- project uh, a divine spirit into you, okay, mm-hmm. and see if you feel this. Now, I'm going to breathe in through my nose, which is going to draw divine light energy to my crown chakra, and exhale through my mouth, which is going to push it to my fingertip. I felt I felt it. It felt like something was being lifted in a weird way, so right. I could feel the energy directly right here. I can feel that big time. Yeah, like yeah. it's because if you don't know what you're looking for, that could be difficult too. Yeah, you know, I've been doing that with people for 30 years now because I can also do that with my fingertip. Oh, I know you're powerful. You know, so, and I do that with my fingertip. They go, wow. And sometimes when the wand didn't work, my fingertip would. So, but yeah, it's, it's all about moving energy mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and, and Sacred Dragon, I 
I, I created the exercise of doing the palm, thumb, fingertip chakra exercise yes. for activation. We do that before any yeah. reading. We yeah. do this every time we speak. And, and we, because we're tracing moving energy. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, real quickly on that note, I worked at uh, Heaven on Earth years ago in Encinitas. And uh, we had, there were multiple psychics on board. So I would come on when a psychic would end a shift and I'd work for four hours and then another psychic would come on and I would leave. Mm -hmm. And the lady who would come on after me, I never met her, but when we, we had a Christmas party, she goes, you're the psychic that goes in there before me, don't you? And I go, yeah. She goes, I see that six-pointed star you trace and all that stuff in the room when I walk. And I go, wow. You've been watching me? <laughs> no, she hadn't. No? No. Oh, whoa. That was the resonation of what I projected and drew in the room that she saw. That's pretty. That's no. pretty. She didn't see me do any. I do that when I first get there. I don't do that when I leave. Yes. She wasn't there. Yeah. That blew my mind. But just that was the validation I also probably needed at the time to show that, hey, you know what? What I'm doing is very powerful. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that was just a, I wanted to share that. So, I did have a question before yeah. we continued because, um, you know, especially when people are new to the arena, the the esoteric realm um i think people have a negative connotation on the pentagram so i don't know if maybe you want to explain a little bit about sure you know you're, you're right about that or, you're, you know. you're you're totally right about that and that's a very valid question mm -hmm. um unfortunately you're right and i say unfortunately i mean um people forget that probably adam probably used a, a five-pointed star in a circle because a five-pointed star in a circle represents man in a circle of protection by god mm -hmm. And initially, I, th I think it was one of the symbols of Venus, to mm -hmm. be very honest with you, in, in ast astrology or astronomy mm -hmm. is where a lot of people, you know, said it was derived from. Mm -hmm. But when you bring it down to Earth and use it in the third dimension. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other yeah, conversation. And not, in anything, not in anything gal galactically in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, we're taught that it represents man. If we stand up and, and put our arms out mm -hmm. and, and just put our legs out to the width of our body and stand, we're five-pointed stars. Mm -hmm. we're all we're all stars we're just all like john lennon said we're all shine on you know what i'm saying <laughs> and we're all stars the egyptians tell you we're all stars mm -hmm. and we're made of stardust what so the uh picture that what, what the michelangelo did that i have in my living um, room yeah man. yeah mm -hmm. and and what happens is when you put a circle around that imagery that star all circles and magic represent the alpha the omega mm -hmm. which is the lord god yes you know so it's hard to believe that somebody's gonna be pulling off some black magic shit with that. But anyway, moving right along, um, you know, that, and that's where the pentagram is very powerful. Mm -hmm. It's there for protection. Mm -hmm. Now that's a right side up pentagram. And can you see that thing on camera? Do you want to zoom in on that? Did you zoom in? Okay, you can zoom in on that. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. Yeah, because the five points represent you know, the five elements, yeah. earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. We have nothing without spirit. Nothing. Nothing. nothing at all. It's the four elements and spirit mixed into a bowl that created human beings. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's why that pentagram, that, that five-pointed star is so important. Now, if that five-pointed star was reversed, then it's satanic. Then it's evil. Mm -hmm. And you have to stay away from people like that. And I'm glad you said that because I'm sure this is stuff people never have heard of before. Like, I'm yeah. glad you're expressing this. Yeah, and so what happens, it would be just like wearing an upside-down cross. You know, people, you see somebody wearing an upside-down cross, you know they're Satan worshipers. If you see somebody with an upside-down pentagram, yes. they're not doing good work and they're probably having bad luck. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because that's just such negative energy. Mm -hmm. And there's no power in that. It's funny. If you want to just zoom in real quick, Dana, again... When the pentagram's reversed, here's the cheeks of the devil, and there's his I was, horns. I just was, that's the first yeah. thing. What is, it starts with a B. Um, yeah. But you, what's the word? What's his name? Yeah, let's not talk about it. <laughs> not going to invoke the bath. Let's not. Voldemort. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, in tarot, he's the devil. In earth magic, he's Pan, which is, Pan's a very light-hearted, you know, earth god, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So there's different variations depending on what tradition you're working with, but all reverse pentagrams are negative. And there's Wiccans out there who work with that, who think it's very positive, and they think that it's just something that you can draw down more to earth with. But when you're on the journey with ceremonial magic and you're trying to not only have a magical journey in, in this life and create and manifest and work with the elements, but you want to go to a higher elevation 
into the next life, you're going to be working with Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That's why I stick with Moses and Solomon, those guys. I mean, I don't go anywhere without those. And Hermes, obviously, I mean, but he's the main teacher for me. But Moses has always been there. And Ten Commandments are oh your my what? God. Foundation? Yes, that's a sword and shield for Sacred yeah. Dragon. That's right. That is foundation. I'm not going to lie. He, he drills this into my yeah. head every time yeah. we talk. What's the Fifth Commandment? Like, he, he questions yeah. me. He, he yeah. quizzes me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When I teach you. You're going to learn the Ten Commandments for sure, man. <laughs> Protect yourself. It's the sword and shield for sacred dragon. It mm -hmm. is. People say, I'm going to go to hell. Well, then you're in violation of God's ninth law. You're bearing false witness against your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, or they say, well, you know, Jesus is God. Well, now you're in violation of God's first law. Thou shalt not worship no gods before me. I love Jesus, but he's not God. Mm -hmm. And he's not before Yahweh. Nobody is. Nothing is. It took me a long time to really get break that self-limitating belief that I had to go through Jesus to get to God. And I know that might be offensive to some, but I... I broke that down and once i did i feel like i unlocked myself on so many so many levels i really did yeah i mean back then you know there's a lot of different interpretations of what jesus represents but one thing we know he represents he's the office of the christ mm -hmm. and he's here to teach compassion and love, love. period Where it was the cycle. unconditional love mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. and moses brings us the law which is the, the severity of christ and this i mean of, of, excuse me yahweh and the strength of yahweh uh, and and Jesus gives us the love and compassion mm -hmm. of, of Yahweh. So in, in Sacred Dragon, you know, we always have Jesus in one hand and Moses in the other. And depending on how you're treating me is depending on how I'm going to, who, who I'm bringing in. Yes. If you ain't right, you're toxic, you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to grab the sword of Moses and cut you loose and say bye. And then I'll be like, just say, see ya. When you really <laughs> understand energies, you really do understand this on a whole different level. Like well, how you, powerful yeah. these things, these tools yeah. are, these resources. Yeah, because, and it, sometimes it's, it, it, people can't be alone because they're addicted to drama. Yes. They get so caught up. You know, it's like when I used to go to Oregon to see my teacher who had 10 acres out in the middle of nowhere. And there's no traffic. He had no TV. <laughs> you know? It's like that's rare. Uh, rare yeah, nice. and and I'd wake up in the morning and go out and meditate in the will on his ten acres there, and and the bugs are so noisy, and nature makes so much noise. You just don't even realize it until mm -hmm. you get away from everything. And then about two weeks, I'm going crazy, and it's like I got to get to the city. I need to hear some noise. I want to go to Burger King. Or, I'm, like, I'm like, more <laughs> concerned about alien abduction. I'm not even kidding with you. Well, here's the deal. Um, I, you know, we're we're off and running now. <laughs> Let's um, not get into that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, it, it, I wouldn't fear that. Now, it did happen to me once where I, I was implanted by an alien and I had it removed. When you but told me that story, my yeah, skin true story. crawled. Yeah, my no. skin crawled. Uh, and, and that was exposed to me. But I know for a fact, because I've had so much contact with so many different people and entities, that when you're connected with the Ten Commandments and you're connected to Yahweh, you don't really have to worry about that. Divinely protected. Yeah, and, and really we don't see too many, to be very honest with you, uh, we don't see dead animals like we used to in these different states that were dissected and stuff like that. Uh, you hear some abduction now, but it's more more of these people abducted now are really going to be used as slave labor somewhere in another dimension that are brought back to their bodies. Yeah, a lot of people are <laughs> pumping out hybrid babies. Yeah, you, know, like, you, you never that's know. Stuff that I you mean, hear. <laughs> so you know, but but for those of us who are God connected, mm -hmm. beam of light, it just doesn't happen here. It's just we're on a whole different level of what we attract. Uh, I can't even get a Ouija board to work for me. I mean, <laughs> so it's because of my energy. It's just there's just too much Yahweh here. You know. Yeah, you're you're vibrating way. Even if I'm that. drunk, it's Yahweh in yeah. the house. You know, mm -hmm. I, no matter what, it, I'm, Yahweh's in the house. So. So, but but why? But let's explain why you said that though. Why do people need to be God conscious? Conscious even when they are drinking. Because you know what? At some point, you'll know that when you're God conscious, it keeps the negative entities away. Because you are an you're open empowered. portal. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I told people, I, I had a. Years ago, I had a problem. A girl I kicked out of my life over that because she said she knew the Ten Commandments. We were been smoking, drinking, straight West Coast and kind of <laughs> stuff at the time. And uh, I said, well, give me the Ten Commandments. She goes, I can't because I'm drunk. I go, well, then you don't know the Ten Commandments. And we got hammered that night. And I tell you what, I don't care how wasted I was or high at the time, I can tell you the Ten Commandments, frontwards, backwards, it don't matter. They're engraved in my heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm not perfect. I'm a human being. 
I'm not going to sit here and tell anybody I'm better than you. Or mm-hmm. I'm not, but I'm, I process things very quickly. Um, <laughs> I promote peace and love. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I honor higher self, lower self. You know, I'm here trying to empower people. So <laughs> but let's get back to this four element thing here. <laughs> so you're going to want to get these four tools on your altar. Now, the pentacle should be facing north. Your uh, knife or blade, if you don't have something as, as, as cute as this or as, as powerful as this, rather, excuse me, uh, it's, it's really a beautiful tool. Um, then you, you could have just a, a, a blade of some sort. Like, like a, a, like a steak knife? In, if, if push came to shove. <laughs> My pork chop knife. <laughs> if, if push, if, yeah. If push came to shove, um. you know, uh, you could do something like that. Um, I could throw my buck knife on the table if I wanted to. Normally, a, a double-edged dagger is nice to have, too. Daggers are always good for the altar. Um, but this is going to represent the element of air. So air is going to go into the east. That's where that would go. Mm-hmm. And then we have fire is the uh, direction of the south. So your fire goes to the south on your altar. And, of course, water is the cup, which goes west. So for those that may not be on the youtube channel the representation of fire is the wand yes that's okay. right that's right And the four elements the sword or the knife is air the pentagram is uh earth the cup is water and the wand is fire those are the four elements now all we have to do is invoke the lord god yahweh and the holy and divine spirit and we got a party baby <laughs> <laughs> bless the spirit of the earth bless the genie of the oil and boom you're ready to go so and that was on our last podcast we were talking about blessing the genie of the oil so if you if you're here on this podcast right now and you're thinking about making an altar you know go back to that genie of the oil and look at how we're blessing things and charging things possibly i also think podcast 12 or 13 we talk about putting people in protections circle protections and that's also through your altar Mm -hmm. Uh, now we've been bringing some frankincense in the rock what do you think Oh, I think it smells amazing. You know, if you anybody who's been to Catholic Church will tell you that this is I'm, what they burn. So, me personally, I so I was not raised Catholic or any religious setting, so I, you know, I'm not around this often, but I'm actually shocked on how much it's smoking. It's very uh We have a lot of rocks on there. A yeah. lot of billowy. Yeah, for sure. No, Fumes. for sure. <laughs> I mean, to pull away from the mic there. <laughs> Usually my executive producers all over me. What's wrong, girl? What's it? <laughs> So I'm moving right along. How, how much time have we been in here, honey? Huh? Okay. All right. So let's move right along here. Um, so once you have these items in these directions, uh, then at some point, whatever I put into the... And, you, you know, we have some incense here. Mm-hmm. Now, you could have just a stick incense burning if you wanted to. Um, let's see. We can move this over here. Get rid of this out of the way for a second. And, you know, we could put this out of the circle of the four elements. Excuse me. No, you're fine. And, um, you know, again, we have earth, air, fire, water here on the table. Now, let's say that um, I'm looking for money, okay? Uh, I'm going to put a note, a piece of paper with my name and date of birth on it and say, uh, bring me money. It's that simple. It's not rocket science. We don't need ancient hieroglyphics, you know what I'm saying, Mm -hmm. and magical incantations. It's that simple. Now, Mm -hmm. for those of you who don't have these tools at home in some way, like Ashley said, a steak knife, sure, why not? A regular cup for water, sure, why Why not? not? I'm serious. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. That's how close spirit is. It, it's inside of you. That, that, no, for you. sure. So for it's sure. just like you don't need all that fancy schmancy stuff that they're trying to sell you on the no. Internet. No. And the other things I wanted to bring in real quick is that um, if you have tarot cards at home, mm. and if it's not the Rider weight deck, that's still okay. But that's my favorite but deck all the time. But it's definitely preferred. We're, he's very traditional. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I, I, my philosophy is that once you master the Rider weight deck, you can read any deck. No matter what their meanings are, the meanings you'll say will it's still so work. True. It will it's still so work. True. They'll still be on point. Mm-hmm. Because all tarot decks were derived from uh, the Rider weight system. Not system, but Pappas. Actually, everybody got it from Pappas. I've studied Pappas, and that's where Rider weight learned how to create their own tarot and do stuff. So there, there's, there's a, a science to the... The madness. Yeah, the madness. <laughs> the for madness. Sure. So here we have the Ace of Swords, which would be the element of air. Okay. So I could put this also in the direction of the east. Mm-hmm. And normally, if you can, have your altar face east. But if it can't, just ar- arrange things where I told you. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, no matter what, the dagger's going to be facing east, period. That's with the element of air. 
Uh, and then we have the Ace of Wands, which is the element of fire. Of course, in Wicca, I believe they call this air and sword fire. So it's a little bit different. In mm -hmm. there. But like anything, there's many strains and, and traditions. Well, it depends on what you're practicing, but you really need to be, pra you know, getting into the background and why things came to be. So if you don't know. Yeah, that's that that could be true. Like, well, there's so just so many different traditions, yes, you know, there is and that's just the way that's worked, I guess. But here we have the element of fire. So now we put that in the south prediction in the south uh, direction of the altar. Here we have the ace of cups which is obviously the direction of the west. I love that card. And we put that right here to where the cup wanted to represent the west right there. And then we have the ace of pentacles. Now, th that doesn't look evil. Come on. It's more like give me money. That is money. Give and that's what money. pentacles represent is money uh, in the money. physical in the physical realm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and that's, that's very, very powerful. Um, and this also represents the direction of the north. So we also not only have the four elements here, but we have the four directions. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's let's take it a step further real quick and say, okay, now, Angel of the East, Raphael, be present here at my altar. And why are we invoking Raphael? To be present, to listen to my prayer, and to manifest my magic. Okay, perfect. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> So I would call Raphael to be present uh, from the east. I would go to the south and call the angel Michael to be present. I would go to the west and call the angel Gabriel to be present. I would go to the north and call the angel Ariel to be present. <clears throat> and then I would ask them uh, all to assist me in the manifestation of my true will. I would call the Lord God Yahweh at that point, and the Holy and Divine Spirit to bless my angels, to bless my magic, and to you know, mm -hmm. uh, help me also. Uh, and then I would have a, either a picture of what I wanted to create, like if, if you're doing tarot magic, like the Ten of Pentacles or something like that, but usually just a, a piece of paper with your name and date of birth on it, you know, boom, right there in the center, so maybe easy. put a crystal on so it. So easy. Yeah. Same thing if you want to do a circle of protection, put somebody in the center, you know, then you'd get maybe your, the magical herbs that you've either crushed together uh, or you could buy some, you know, five, uh, what is it, helping hand, uh, five fingers. Uh, seal of Solomon, you know, things of that nature, sage, and make a circle and work with that. But that's, that's how you're going to really start invoking and, and working. Then when you have your stuff on the table, you invite spirit to come in and look. They know what you're talking about. They know what you're wanting to manifest. Yes. And you meditate on that, visualize them being in the room, visualize them receiving the information, then visualizing the outcome of your ritual. That's how you're going to – and then when I leave the room, I leave everything set up. Spirit comes anytime they want. They know this is my intention. I come back. I'll charge the altar again. Mm -hmm. So that's how that's going to work. So – I'm hoping that wasn't too much for everybody out there. I mean, for no, those who haven't like heard. No, I felt like you were very thorough. You know. These are things that I, I'm still myself learning, so it's very good to know these things, just down to basics. So. Right, right, right. And, um, again, you know, it's all about intention with application. Mm -hmm. You know, we could sit at home and go, I, I wish I could do that. Do it. Just do it. Just get up. You don't have to have, like she said, the elite stuff to work with. Just send anything simple, you know. It's called field expediency. You make it work, man. Make it work. Take that pop bottle right there. And <laughs> represents water. <no. laughs> right. Who knows? Huh? Who knows? There's many ways to do this. But I want to thank everybody tonight here for this uh, podcast, for being here. I want to thank Ashley. Thank you very much for having it's, me. It's always nice to share spirit <laughs> with you. And I've got a lot of compliments on your personality and the, and the Q&As here. They, they, a lot of people thought it was good. Oh, awesome. Well, thank talking. you very much. Yeah. I hope and we can continue to yeah, yeah, teach yeah. others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Athena, I want to thank my executive producer, Athena. Thank you, Athena. And, of course, we always thank the Lord God, Yahweh, and the Holy and Divine Spirit. I just want to wish everybody out there many blessings. God bless you, your families, uh, your children, your pets, your friends. Mm -hmm. And may God bless you all. So be it. Amen. So many be it. Amen. Peace. Bye. Love. Time has come to be a Time has come for a change.